Welcome to Being the Genuine Athlete podcast, where we inspire those who aim for excellence in life and want to understand the how and what it takes to be a champion in life. My name is Jura Koschak. My purpose, dedication and commitment is to activate your potential, that you understand the ego through your sport and life situations. So I share and give you the tools to be just this, the genuine athlete. Are you ready to tune in? Hello, listeners. Thank you for listening to this uh, podcast, uh, the episode with Gregor Fitzko, my friend, my acquaintance from my also near hometown uh, that we know each other from Slovenia. And he's a GPTCA uh, coach, uh, Evolution Kids Tennis uh, Ambassador as well, uh, coach for young players, for junior players under 15, under 10, and as young players. And he's a manager of tennis academies in Slovenia, developing. So thank you very much for taking the time. And uh, I invited you, first of all, because I think of you as a genuine person. And this podcast is for genuine athletes. Genuine, close to heart. You understand stuff. You know how to develop and how to invest yourself and your love for tennis sport into a young person. Please. Yeah, thanks, Jure, for uh, reaching out. It's nice to see you. And uh, uh, you are on, on the other part of the world. But as you said, uh, we have our home region. We have our uh, friendship, uh, which is connecting us. But we connected also uh, strongly through, through sports and through tennis. And this is, this is something that uh, it's, it's very important. Tennis connect us. And I'm really, really happy that, uh, uh, that I'm here today. And I'm, I'm honored to speak with you. Thank you. So let's just dive in. Uh, explain first um, your role in maybe GPTCA, what it stands for. GPTCA is a professional organization which is uh, trying to uh, educate coaches and, and developing tennis in, in coaching area. And the goal for me was to uh, bring GPTCA to Slovenia to make connections between uh, Slovenian coaches and, and high level professional uh, especially ATP coaches, which in my opinion, it's, uh, it's, it's only one part of tennis, the professional, the professional tennis, but uh, it's good to have the experience from, from the first hand. Uh, it's good to have the possibility to reach out to these experts uh, directly. Uh, as we know, as coaches, we need the knowledge in every part of uh, development, not, not only professional, not only kids tennis, uh, not only the recreational coach who is giving lessons, but we need, we need all the parts to, to, to find all the puzzles and, and put together. So this was my goal, to bring GPTCA to Slovenia and to give Slovenian coaches, players and parents possibility to be strongly connected to the professional organization such as GPTCA. Great. And uh, you are using all of these um, relationships and network and uh, knowledge to grow yourself, but also to grow in the environment that you come into. I know that you've been now already in Slovenia in a couple of regions and places and cities that you've developed uh, a tennis club, tennis academy in a way. Uh, maybe you can share something about that. Of course, with a lot of uh, coaches from uh, from from high level players, for example, like Magnus Norman, the coach of uh, Stanislas Wawrinka, uh, it's or Tony Nadal, uh, which we discussed uh, a few weeks ago. Those are those are such a, a precious e experiences that that are unique. Only it's coming only from them. Uh, it's helping us to to be more aware. What we can uh, focus now already in, in uh, maybe in kids development or what can be aware already now, anticipation of what will happen later. And uh, yeah, so meaning Slovenia, yeah, I've been to few places. I've been uh, in many regions and in many clubs. I think uh, uh, I've been head coach to four or five clubs uh, in Slovenia and it, it was a great journey. Um, until now, because I need those experiences uh, as, uh, as a head coach. Uh, in the beginning, there was a lot of mistakes, which I did. 
as a uh, coach, as an organizer, especially maybe in relationship with, with parents, which maybe we can uh, touch later more. Um, but, but I think in last, how much has it been? Uh, 17 years, I needed those experience uh, to start on my own project, which, uh, which, which then we started uh, two years ago, where we created uh, our own program, uh, our own organization, which led later to our own academy. Great, and um, you are emphasizing working uh, with young players uh, from the beginning, uh, that you grow them, that you invest a lot of time and, and uh, strong, uh, that you build the strong fundamentals for tennis game, not only for tennis, tennis, uh, being professionals, but being a person, a child, a person who develops into uh, understanding the game, into having all the aspects, avoiding injuries, uh, doing your prevention, using the game to grow as well in, in life. That's what your input is mainly, I think. Yeah. So until now, <clears throat> I was, I, in the beginning, I didn't know which direction uh, actually I will, I will find myself as a coach, either in professional, either in uh, kids development or, or just as a head coach. And, uh, because you were, uh, sorry, you were also a player before, right? You were playing tennis. Yes, I was a junior player before. Honestly, I never had any strongly professional goals in my career. Uh, I was a competitive player in, in, uh, as a junior. And then uh, there, was a, there was a time of my life that I didn't feel uh, any competitive uh, motivation back then. Uh, and then sometime I was in a music project. I was still practicing training and, and uh, living sports life, of course, uh, studying, but uh, I was in a music project in between. For me, it was like I needed some kind of new challenge to be successful. This, this leads maybe to, to the question which I, I question myself. Why, why did I choose, um, I don't know, to study sport, uh, to, to become a coach? Uh, and these questions lead to the answer that I was analyzing my tennis environment from the past. How were my parents? How were, how were my coaches? How was me? I never find any excuse that I didn't make as a pro. I found, I found the answer. Why, why did I uh, became a coach? And, and the question, why did I became a coach? I mean, the answer is that, yes, I, I, I was missing a lot of things that, that I didn't have in my environment to have a complete program as a junior already which maybe should maybe give me an opportunity to have more doors open in tennis. But still, I'm, a very, happy, uh, I'm very happy that I choose to be a coach because that's how I can learn many things that maybe I didn't learn before as a player. And I can, I can uh, transform them into the life. So you found yourself. You, you knew that uh, in a way this was meant to be how it was with your coaches, I also had that experience. I had great coaches, great people in my life, but uh, there was lack of something. The, the knowledge was not there. The connections, no internet 20, 30 years ago uh, when we began our careers as juniors. Uh, and uh, we can, I can be grateful, and I'm sure that you're grateful as well for everything that wasn't there, that made you now who you are and that you can transmit this new approach on really putting um, a lot of focus and, and energy into uh, growing these children and developing in, in the right direction. So that's why you also found, uh, I think, this uh, Evolution uh, Kids Tennis, that is a great project. Where is it from and how did you come in contact with? Yeah, Evolution Kids Tennis is, uh, is a great professional development uh, knowledge, which is coming from uh, one of my biggest mentors in tennis and also in life, Mike Barrell. I was lucky that I, I made a decision and went a few years ago to Belgrade where he had a presentation for Serbian coaches. And uh, this, is, this is the time that, that uh, opened a lot of new doors for me and that gave me a stronger direction in the future. So when I started to explore kids tennis more, a lot of new things happened for me. Of course, I became a better coach than, than only before where I was thinking, okay, so if I want to be a good coach, I need a professional player, which is not true. 
And uh, if we question ourselves, who is better coach, the one who works with professional or the one who works with kids? This is also a question that it's hard to answer. Uh, there is many professionals that they speak a lot uh, their first coaches, their coaches in, in kids, in kids period, period. And it, it's true. If those coaches were not there for them, they wouldn't be where they are today. So when I started the journey for kids tennis more, a lot of, tic- a lot, a lot of things um, improved. Not only the organization of uh, the program that, that, we, the, that we started to create, also relationships between the coaches, between coach and parent, between coach and uh, player, and then, of course, everybody together. So, uh, you know, when, when, you are, when you are a player, you have one experience. And when you are uh, a coach, you have another experience. But you need a lot of time uh, where you see a big picture and, and start to connect all those things together. And that's why the Evolution Kids Tennis, it's still um, one of the biggest parts of, of our program and of our academy. We still work together uh, with, with Mike and with Evolution team. And I have to say that I never worked with such a great team of uh, not just experts, but enthusiasts and people who love kids uh, than, than we are working now. And especially now in the last two months of this uh, Corona period, we connected a lot and we started to develop a lot of great things, which uh, I hope... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, players, coaches, and parents out there will will have the opportunity to um, to test and to use and to help them. Yeah, I saw that you were doing a lot of videos, a lot of uh, animating, motivating, presenting knowledge, giving content to parents, players, uh, that you could amuse them and that they could be that they were feeling that they were taken care of in this time. Uh, maybe we'll touch this time later at the end of our call, but uh, now let's stay with the Evolution Kids Tennis. Maybe not only the organically or uh, uh, didact- the didactic, no? what it's based on, uh, so like system, but uh, you mentioned that these people, Mike, like Mike Barrel and others, that developed this, that invented this program, and that are committed. Maybe talk about this passion and commitment why is this program so vital and so vibrant and so uh, good? Yeah, I think the, the, biggest, the biggest difference between having a program, a program it's having uh, uh, people who are uh, all the time with contact, in contact with you and, and have a uh, support all the time. So it, it's not just about having a specific program because we know that there is a lot of programs out there in the tennis world, and, uh, and a lot of good coaches. But it, it a lot it, of good coaches. It, like it needs to some 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 points need to come together. Yeah, and and uh, I I think it's very important that not have only having a program. It's uh, it's not enough. Uh, I think you you have to be a person who is willing to to also contribute back to that program. So not only take but also give. And this is what I started to learn, that uh, I, I need to give all the time. I need to give all the time if I want to take something. And, and that's why I'm sticking to this program, because uh, Mike, Mike himself and the rest of the team, they are open to uh, take and to give. And I think it has to be, it has to be both ways. It's, like, it's not enough if, uh, I don't know, you, you buy a program or you, you get a program. Uh, you, you need to be open to, uh, to share and uh, to contribute back and to be all the time moving along. Alive. This, uh, it needs to alive. be fluent, yeah. Okay. yeah. So this, uh, with Mike Barrel and the team, you are uh, connected really closely, I think, and you are using all of your knowledge and feedbacks and retrospective and building up this uh, image and, and usage of uh, Evolution Kids Tennis. How is it? How is this transmitting on if you can compare yourself, your experience of a junior young kid player with no evolution kids uh, uh, system in place and maybe when you didn't know about the systems that you were learning in in the university and uh, from other coaches and the seminars that you took and now when you are already have been implementing this evolution kids tennis system, what are the main differences in these three points? Yeah. 
there is no comparison with uh, with my junior development we i mean okay the time the time changed and uh, also the the kids nowadays are are different than than we were back then and the the needs of the people the needs of the kids are totally different so though this this kind of programs they they came because the the kids and the people they needed yeah they extra need help they need uh, a different kind of support than we we needed back then with us was like in junior we had uh, we had lessons we had tournaments in the end of the week of course we we called each other and we went we went out to play with with uh, players and that's actually it and if we stayed with that program today i think that 70% or i don't know a lot of kids a lot of a lot of players they will not be here with us so we have to we have to look from the other side we have to look from create the environment first and then start to give the elements like lesson physical conditioning club tournaments and all those things and and back then we were the one to create environment but now we have to create the environment first and then put the player in that's a difference and that's also the the contact point which is i think the most important for today if we want to have successful tennis environment we need to we need to we need to think from creating the environment first and then putting the individual elements inside what we want to do yeah but this environment uh, you mean by coaches knowledge and connecting points and seeing through adapting being flexible having a broad horizon of different aspects of the game of life of of as you mentioned uh, tactics techniques uh, lessons uh, psychology uh, phys physical stuff and and not just have this like a, a plan and throw it and be with the player but this environment can you explain elaborate something more on this environment what do you mean exactly by this and include in this answer as well parents uh, because yeah. i think they are a part of yeah of course uh, you 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 just uh, you just anticipate my word because i wanted to uh, to say something about parents with the environment i mean that nowadays if we want to have a professional development uh, already for kids tennis yes we need to spend more time with parents we need to educate parents and we need to be in touch with them anyhow they are they are our main customer it's not the player it's it's the parents right if I look back in the past, there was no education for parents. Um, the parents were also, I don't think there was so much included in, in, in the environment of the player than they are today, uh, which in, in, in one way was good and in another way was not good. Uh, for example, in my personal experience, the, the support from my parents was uh, uh, very positive in the behavior, but maybe not not enough positive making that positive push and and be all the time uh, there with you and and trying to be the connection between you and the coach as well but this is today what is happening we are we are managing parents as well and we are coaching the parents as well as well not just the players and then with the environment of course we mean that in in my junior times there was a club and uh we didn't have any special a preparation before we went to the national tournaments or international tournaments uh, we just played and the players was enough the, the players the club players that we've been was enough to make environment nowadays we are looking for that first we really prepare them before we uh, open the door to the national or to the regional or national or international level first we really try to prepare them in our environment because nowadays also the, the the kids are living in different zones uh back then we were you know we were not af afraid of maybe losing that much that than they are today we were not afraid of uh, going something new than than they are today so uh it's not like we are putting them into the comfort zone is that we are trying to show them all the challenges and all the all the ups and downs that they are going to achieve already in the development so then they are ready for that and this is how we believe that we are not just preparing them for <clears throat> for tennis 
but we are preparing them for life with the life skills. Mm -hmm. So um, you can, but you can compare, not maybe that you talk about names or anything. I'm not going into that, but how you were in between when you began your coaching career and how you are now, how you've grown and developed and how you gained a lot of experience uh, regarding seeing how much failure and mistakes can be done without this, this support, also for the coaches, also for parents, and how little it takes in a way, just small bits and pieces of information put at the right time that you can have a really nice environment and not successful in a competitive way, but that people like to go to the club, that they don't feel the pressure if they lose or they need to win, but that they understand that it's not about just winning and losing, it's much more. Yes, this is something that I saw when I was in a position of a head coach in club or now where this is actually our program and we, we can move the program the, the way that we want. When I was in a head coach position, I only had, yes, I, uh, my, my, my job is to, to be a head coach, but not like a club manager who is trying to create the environment uh, all together uh, and then we, uh, when I was a head coach I saw that we put so much effort into the practice into development into the tournament preparation and that <clears throat> and all those things but there was still many uh, mistakes being done by the club management or other people in the club that was actually all the time uh, destructuring everything what we were structuring but now we, when we are uh, uh, a team who is uh, responsible and we don't have any other, how can I say, uh, people that are not in the same story that we are, we don't have those problems. So we started to create, if you know what I mean, we started to, uh, to create the program and move the program uh, without any other people who don't have the same vision like, like we have. So it's, it's very important that everybody that, that, that works in, in the club it's not only coaches. It's not just professional team. It's everybody. Everybody, it's an it's important part of this puzzle. And everybody should be on the same way. Uh, it doesn't mean that everybody will uh, accept what you say. And there are people that they, they will not maybe adapt uh, easier. There will be people that will adapt easier and adapt harder. And there are, there are also people maybe sometimes that it's better they will not be in your environment. Sometimes it's also better to break apart and not, not be together in the team anymore. That's also, uh, that's also natural because there is not like one program or one place or one way that we should follow, uh, especially in tennis, which is such a game of diversity. Uh, so many different people, so many different game styles and, and, and developments. But it's all about uh, accepting this dynamic and as we discussed before, give and take all the time. Yeah. This is the one approach, how to give, give, give and understand the content and how much you can build a relationship and how much stronger it is. And, and uh, thank you for mentioning all the bits and pieces that are maybe self-granted or we sometimes think that this is already settled, but you need to put attention to them, like talk with uh, someone who is an accountant in the club, give attention to someone who is a waiter in the club, give attention to parents who are quiet and ask them and, and, and connect everything. So that, that all plays a big part. Yes. Yeah, of course. It's, uh, so f in, in my position, what I learned is that it's, it's very good to, li we have to listen very good. We should uh, be very careful what, it's, what kind of information and stimulation is coming uh, from the environment. Not only, not only we, don't, we don't have to all the time lead as a as a first person that only we are the one giving instruction and, and leading but we should also listen observe very yeah. carefully yeah. observe and uh, I think this is something that uh, that 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 the nature is also this this message is coming from the nature because the human it's a it's a person of nature and yeah we should have we should have these feelings also that uh, that are not only feeling for business, but it's also feeling for, for, hu for humanity, for persons, for emotions. And uh, we should develop ourselves as a person very much if we want to develop as a professional, professional uh, figure.
Yeah, and that's that's the deal uh, that you had already as a kid, and then later as a junior player, and then later that you invested in yourself, time, money, and effort, and energy, and everything on growing yourself, on being the observer, and being flexible, and being uh, also growing your empathy-wise, understanding social-wise, uh, and uh, you you can also share something maybe what you experience uh, also already on the kids, uh, junior and kids level of competitions, uh, how kids and parents are struggling and they just need a small piece of information and how everything then flows. And it doesn't flow when you hit that block and, and, and it doesn't just go through that wall because you are expecting, thinking and not seeing the whole picture. Yeah, okay, so regarding the, the competition, Okay, in, in our program, in, in the academy, we have, uh, we have all the levels with juniors. We don't, we don't work with uh, professional, professionals who are on the tour. That's, that's another side of the story. And uh, we are developing, we are focusing on the development part and on the transition part mostly. So regarding competition, I think if we start right from the beginning, mm -hmm. which is a lot of work that we introduce the, the competition elements uh, right from the beginning, we have so much more possibilities that the, 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 the players and the parents will be ready for the things that they know that they are not going to be pretty. Because <clears throat> uh, if, if we speak about the, about the competitive tennis, uh, one is competitive, other is professional. I think we have to be careful not to mix those two. And uh, sometimes we mix, we mix them too much and we are trying to transform the kids into the professionals. I mean, it's, it's, it's not right because this is like, uh, if we go from, from the inner side of ourselves, it's like I have to transform from, from me, myself, to Tony Nadal, which is unrealistic because Tony Nadal, it's Tony Nadal because Rafa Nadal. If Rafa Nadal was not there, Tony will not be here. So what I, want to, what I wanted to say is that players and parents are making the coaches as well. It's not like only coach is making the player. It's also player and parent makes a coach. What I think is very important that we have to set standards. What we want to achieve in, in, in kids development and in junior. Not only with players, also with parents. And, and then... When we, when we go to the stage of competitive tennis, we need to be aware that this is still a development phase. This is still a learning phase. And sometimes the problem is, mostly the problem is that we are expecting everything should be perfect. We go to the tournament, we have to be ready. We go to the tournament, I know how to behave, but it's not true. Uh, tennis as, as, as a game, it's a, it's a very personal game. And, and, and uh, the situations are very personal the players are facing each other personally on the court. The parents are facing each other personally court side. And then the coaches as well. And the, you, you see many times the game is not being played on the court only. It's being played also, also on outside. There is a lot of times the situation then the kids are not in the first vision anymore. It's the parents who are arguing, arguing outside. And the kids suffer they see that and they suffer and they know that the only way that they can play tournaments is that, yes, I will have to take care of my bad parents. Can be also with coaches, but mostly happening with, with parents. So what, what is very important is that in, in the development phase, we have to really, really, really focus on, uh, on all those aspects. Getting prepared, I think, the, the competitiveness, it's, it's a part of every person. There is not, there, there is, every, every person is competitive. Uh, everybody wants to be successful in something. So developing competitive side of the player, I think it's normal because we have to prepare in life to be competitive. competitive. If something is not right in the kid's face, in the development phase, later there is more possibility that the parent will be in, in the most important uh, center of, of uh, competitiveness, but it's not. Should be the player only, 
and we are only the structure around. Yeah, great. Thank you for explaining the difference, the distinction between being competitive and being professional, being, you know, playing for actually a hobby or because you like it and then having a job. Because being professional, it means your job. It's your job. And a lot of players have lost themselves, have destroyed the relationship with their parents, with coaches, because these phases were not good looked at and, and managed. So I believe, I trust that you manage that and, and you educate yourself first and then your coaches, your team, your environment, kids and parents regarding these different distinctions and, and phases, levels that need to be met. You cannot go from uh, first or second or third grade of primary school to second you know, year of uh, high school or university. A genius doesn't do that. So it needs to be step by step and you have to meet certain requirements. You know, there is... Uh... There is a lot of time the same sentence sentence coming from parent and the parents they say a lot of times Look, we don't expect anything from our player to become uh, We don't expect to to make a results or you know, but this is something that that I don't believe Every parent is expecting to from from his kid. Uh, I'm expecting for my daughter to uh, to achieve something and uh, uh, to work hard for for her goals to, to learn that uh, there is uh, th there is many elements that you have to learn first uh, before actually you can you can achieve something uh, those kind of statements are are coming from from our unconscious uh, which is playing the nice is, nice thing you need you want to yes. be good yes so there are hidden stuff yeah yeah all, all the fears actually they come from unconsciousness right and, and there is a lot of fear with parents and this fear is then being transmitted to the player and, and the fear is the biggest enemy in, in the field that, that uh, we can have. If you play against yourself, phew, that's the toughest opponent and it beats you all the time. If you, I mean, you can, you can beat yourself and you have to beat yourself uh, because otherwise you cannot beat your opponent. So what I, what I wanted to say is that the kids, the, of course, the, the competitiveness that we develop. We don't develop competitive tennis because we want kids to be professional. And if a parent says to me, I'm not expecting anything from my kid, uh, I say to him, yes, but I do. Because uh, building the competitiveness, it's a very, very fundamental part. One, it's to socialize. Other, it's to, to be competitive. The third thing, it's to learn to work hard. So we have to we have to uh, develop those those uh, those skills those mental skills and doesn't matter what kind of ranking or which kind of way the player later will will go but these skills that we develop in in the beginning will be maybe the the biggest weapon for the adult person later. Yeah, this uh, to prepare a child as well for when they are grow when they are. Um older, mature, how to cope with stress, with pressure, because in life we will always compete and compare ourselves and it's a job, it, it's where we live, it's in school, it's everywhere. So that's very important. And I've talked to a WTA professional coach, uh, Izo Zunic, and he said, how can you have a bad day in tennis if tennis is luxury and it's a choice that you make that you want to play tennis? So it's crazy that a lot of parents are playing this nice game, uh, because they don't have, not, it's not crazy, we are not judging, but when a coach can have this knowledge and can guide and manage uh, players and also parents in a way that to explain them how to talk after the game, maybe to stay quiet when they drive them home from the tournament, how to talk at home, not only about tennis and, and all these stuff, it's very important to give uh, the light on because as, as I always want to emphasize, it's a small bits and pieces, but they bring so much. And out of the subconsciousness, out of the fear, uh, uh, instead of staying in the fear, worrying, pressuring, being in a crazy story, injured, and, and, and having psychosis in a way, because of some pressure that you do not understand. Yeah, and I'm really happy that you mentioned pressure. And we're speaking about feelings right now, right? And these are the strongest, strongest feelings. And tennis as a sport, it's, it's a sport which pulls out everything that you have inside of you. Tennis will go deeper than you think. It will touch your 
deepest emotions, deepest feelings, and it will pull them out. And it's not pulling them out only from a player. It's pulling out also from parents. That's why they have those kind of reactions. They cannot control their emotions. So we were, we were speaking before to be innovative. Uh, I, I think to be innovative means that, especially in the kids in the development phase, we have to look for new approaches. We have to look for things that we didn't give to our clients, to our parents, to our players before. And one of those things that we found is uh, also to work with parents, not only giving them some kind of a book, read this and you're gonna become a better parent, but bringing them to the court, bringing them to the situation in a practical way where they're going to face this stress, where they're going, where, where they're going to see their child uh, having bad moments, yeah, maybe also suffer in some kind of situation, and we can create that. Uh, but this is a this is a topic for the under ten. Yeah, I I work with few clubs and academies uh, as a developer, and um, if I have to look for something that the clubs and academies are working the least, that's actually working with parents and uh, creating different kind of ways for bringing the, comp the competitive ways closer to kids. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing lessons, everybody's doing club tournaments, sending them th their kids to the, to the tournaments, but uh, we really have to, to make some kind of institution inside, not only giving a lesson. Great that you do this uh, situation role play, that you put uh, parents in the situation that kids are enduring and having uh, in order for them to shift because it's one thing to stay courtside and be smart ass in a way uh, and of course as you said tennis brings out Novak Djokovic says that it's triggers and it's one-on-one yeah. -on -one. it's also in doubles but in one-on-one -on -one and in clubs competing duels and, and it's crazy what it brings out but if parents do not have this experience just only in the mind so that's a, that's a very good move that you bring them in the, in the moving. Yeah, we, we, did, we did role playing. We, we created special lessons uh, with kids and parents together. Uh, so parents were, were playing a role in communicating before the matches and after the matches. Uh, they were communicating with their own kid and they were communicating also with other kids. And there is a big difference when we communicate with our own kids than with other one. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to learn to communicate with our kids, with our kid, the same like with other one. Because Without this, this is this emotion. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And this is this is something that is making us more professional. Mm -hmm. Because it's a it's a different situation. And then also we, we brought them to the court not to teach them how to coach, because they can never be coaches. They will they will never be coaches and they should never be coaches but they should know how to, uh, they should have experiences in different situations, before the match, after the match, uh, beside of the court, situation with other parent, where, where other parent is breaking the, uh, the code of conduct and all those things. And they are very happy when we bring them closer because they want to be close, but they just don't know how to help. They want to help, but they do a lot of times mistakes because, because they want to help. So, so you make these shifts and transformations and I think that it's, I believe that it's uh, influencing kids as well uh, in relationships because when a parent is angry and transmits some emotion and they think that it's okay, but it's not. So it's working. Did you, yeah. did you put the parents as well in the umpire's uh, chair? Yes. Yes, we do that uh, in the same, in the same uh, event of lessons, special events. Uh -huh. we did uh, we did role playing we did different kind of uh, stations where parent was in different situation as an umpire as a parent speaking to a kid uh, who who had a bad moment with a parent who find himself with a kid where kid ask him something that it's totally different like daddy can we go to, can we go to have a to have an ice cream if I, want, if I win my match. So what is right to say, yes or no? These kind of situations that, uh, that it's really something that uh, we should coach them. Mm -hmm. We should coach them as well. 
we are speaking about parents not because parents are the biggest problem, but because the problem is that we just don't spend enough time to developing and to and to educate and to educate them. It's like sugar is not the problem when you understand and when you know how to use it or not use it. It's not that yes. the sugar is the problem. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah. When you when you give attention and knowledge, so great. Can you say about something, as you already mentioned, regarding the times that we are now in or slowly going out of this quarantine situation and actually the uncertainty uh, staying in completely different routine. Actually, everything was destroyed, uh, the routine that we had before. And uh, uh, you managed to do a lot of videos, a lot of motivation for your players. And in general, you posted a lot online. Yes, I think in the last two months, if I speak for for uh, for our team first, I think this period helped our team and us to become better mm -hmm. because we connected much more inside of the coaches team, for example. We had time to review everything, what we achieved until now and, and how is our program and which elements are missing in the program, what is good, what we have to improve. Uh, so we really have time to review about that and we improved a lot in uh, completing the program much more. So that's, that's a big plus. We also had more connections with parents, with some of the parents than before, because some of the parents, they are not so close to the training process as the other parents. But in these times, much more people were on the internet using technology and we just tried to use these times to help the parents with, with a webinar, with a presentation, with an open discussion, like a workshop. I'm speaking about our academy right now. We help players uh, on a mental side, on a physical side. We helped also other Slovenian organizations, yes, where we uh, try to provide some kind of material to work from home. But I think this time changed a lot and also tennis changed a lot the development that, that we provided before, the elements of the program that we provided before and what we provide now, it's, it's different. So we are speaking much more about uh, trying to help players when they are home. Program on the court is now bigger, is now wider. There are much more elements that we can include right now because people are starting to be more and more spending time on the technology, yes, not, not having problems to work from home. We know that kids are now using a lot of computer much more, uh, doing school from home, parents are working from home, and also the development part, tennis development, it's also moving, not just staying on the court, but also moving to home. So uh, there is a lot of good things actually happening. Happened. Yeah, happened, yeah. Earlier it was a routine, school, uh, homework, tennis, so you, like a coach, uh, I think that you couldn't just give them research about history or research about forehand or something at home. Now they had space time and they were interested. They were involved. And uh, I think yes. parents now more are involved. So for the end of our call, how, how do you see the future, how it's changed now over this quarantine and how you developed as well as a team? Uh, what do you expect when the children be, will be coming back and on the competition? Will be more unity, more friendship? Will everybody more be connected? What we are feeling already, because we are returning on the courts already. We, we started with uh, individual uh, lessons only, and we are progressing now to smaller groups and uh, eventually to bigger groups. What, what we uh, feel is that there is much more need from player to build relationship. I think now it's time to build stronger relationship personally, because we were so much time apart from each other. Uh, and yes, we were in touch with people, but building relationship. And you, also you cannot... earlier, earlier, it was not so much a focus on emotions and personal connection. Yes. So, so I really think that uh, the future will bring much more uh, appreciation of building relationship and, and, and keeping that relationship. I think this was, this was kind of shock for everybody that nothing lasts forever and uh, we should appreciate the time spent with our clients, with our, with our, um, with our parents, with our, uh, with our kids 
uh, and, and, and if we are going to listen to that, I think uh, we are going to improve personally first. And if we improve personally first, then everything will improve. Great. Thank you. The best last message. Thank you very much for your time and explanation. And I believe that parents and other coaches will uh, get a lot out of this. Yulia, thank you for, for your time. I, I was honored to, to speak with you. I wish you all the best uh, in, in your place and a lot of success, a lot of good interviews, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Yes, all good for you and your players and parents and the entire team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Follow me on being the Genuine Athlete Instagram and Facebook page. Share, like and comment and be genuine all the way.